So today I will be showing what we're going to do with the SVG cuts. I used my Cricut from the Backyard Bliss collection and I put together three cards but I can easily and I show you how um, you could get six cards out of these pieces that were sent. These pieces are something that I send as a thank you to my VIP gals when they place an order and I do different things but it's always typically card based. So the card stack colors that I sent are pewter, white daisy, cinnamon, sunset, desert rose, fern, sweet leaf, canary, cocoa, pebble, charcoal, and capri. Those are the card stacks that I use to cut out these many pieces. And I'm just showing you here on the clipboard kind of the components like that the watering can here has three pieces, the terracotta pot has two, the desert rose or actually cinnamon flowers here are two components. The rose is the desert rose cardstock and it's two components. And then I'm really gonna make sure that you can see how to put the bees together. I did try to keep those so that they would all stay together, at least the body parts. Um, and then you just need the yellow base with the two leaves for each of the three bees. So what you do is you take the top part of the head with antenna and the body and you'll glue that down and then the triangle piece is the stinger end. So I struggle with this for a little bit, so um, just have a little patience. I think if I had glue on it, it would have been a little easier, but it kept kind of getting blown around and blown off my stuff. So that's the stinger. And then the little comma is the stripe for the body. And I'm just roughly placing it on there. Later, later you will see that they look a lot nicer. And I do recommend that you go ahead and dry fit your wings um, because they're they're not the same. So go ahead and dry fit your, your wings so you know which is top and bottom. And then I did ink all of the edges of the wings with the Carolina color, just real faint. I thought about doing just a shimmer on them, so that might be something that you want to consider. But I think of the shimmery wings more along the dragonfly line and not with the bees. And now these yellow flowers, the, the higher up on the stalk the flowers are, typically the bigger the bulb base of the flower. So there's kind of a bulb base, you know, half of a, a softball or a baseball kind of, um, that you just line up with the green. And the lower down on the stalk, typically the smaller that is. And then there's a couple of different um, I can't think of the word. Bottoms to the flowers. Again, still can't think of the word. Um, so you could try that one with the daisy or obviously with the rose or if you wanted to do one of the six petal flowers on that. It's up to you what you want to do. I use the smaller one for the daisy and the bigger one for the rose. I'm kind of swapping that now. And this is kind of why I dry fit. And before I glue any of these together, anything that I wanted to ink, I went ahead and did that. So you can see here, especially on the green, that I really did some inking. On the terracotta pots, I used cinnamon just to bring it out a little bit more of the warmth tones. And I use canary on all of the yellows, including around that daisy. Um, so this is the floral sentiment stamp. It's a brand new stamp and I use some of the pieces from this and then this is a sneak peek for the National Stamping Month in September. This particular one is Sending Love and Laughter and it's CC9220 so be on the lookout for that in September. It's two side you know it's two full six by six sheets of sentiments just very versatile. On the cards today, I decided I wanted to shake things up a bit and I wasn't going to do fun folds, but I went ahead and cut my 8.5 by 11 tall so that I have two of the taller, you know, tent folds cards. And then I would had a traditional base just around my desk, so I decided to use that. And as you can see here, I had gotten out some embossing folders. And so the base with the diamond embossing is four by five and a quarter, so I just took a quarter inch off both sides. The one with writing on it is three by four and a quarter, and then the center one is two by three. And you can cut those for whatever work for you. So I'm just dry fitting on the watering can 
the flowers that I think will work and make a nice little vignette. Um, they and the Cricut had more, I think they, they might have had less flowers actually in the watering can or they were more of the same where I just wanted to mix them all up. And I'm pulling, putting this, thinking of you sentiment, I was thinking I was going to put it around the watering can almost like a label, but it just, it didn't feel like it was in balance or the right shape or size for me. So I pulled that off and while I'm still letting my brain ponder on that, I'm going to go ahead and assemble one of these terracotta pots. So I am slipping the stems for these flowers in between the front edge of the terracotta pot and the dirt. And then I decided I needed some more further back. So I'm just cutting a slit in the dirt where I want to stick one of the stems. And it's not really going in and I want to make sure to not bend my um, stem too much. So I'm going to grab my piercing tool and just open up that hole so that it slides in a little easier. And then you can play with what's in front of what and, and how they're all gonna be lined up. And I haven't glued anything yet, I'm just kind of playing with it. Originally I thought that I was going to use these white flowers with the daisy, but I really like them here along the edge of that terracotta pot. So now I'm gonna put the rose in the other terracotta pot. I just I like roses, I like all flowers. So kind of setting some stuff up so that I can play with the components that I've gathered and just see what works. And I'm looking to see if the bee goes on the handle of the watering can or if it's gonna go on the spout and which direction it's gonna point. So all of those things, you know, I, I like to play with and, and just see what works. I will say that I wish I would have done the inking of the edges of the embossed cardstock pieces. I ended up doing two of them with the canary and one of them with the Carolina blue. And I almost wish that I would have done this daisy one with the sunset or the smoothie color um, just so it would have more of those peachy orange hues. I can't remember what this um, yarn is called. It's an old, old thing from close to my heart, over 10 years old, but the colors work really well. I think officially this color is cranberry, but it works really well with the scarlet. I think I might have stamped that sentiment with scarlet, and um, so it just worked for that. And I did, when I was putting adhesive on my daisy, it broke my stem in half, but I don't know if you can see, it looks perfect on the card. I just put one on top of the other as it was supposed to be lined up originally. And if the person that receives it complains about that, I will be surprised. <laughs> I mean, who's gonna complain about getting a card in the mail? And that card that I just did would be really good pattern to do for the book binding card. If you're familiar with that, you glue one inch down the one side so it leaves you a four and a quarter by four and a quarter square to open. And here I decided my watering can, I wanted to tuck more of the greenery in to the middle of the area just to give it some depth. I didn't feel that there was going to be enough of the stem poking through that the glue was going to hold it all that well or all that secure, so I did go ahead and grab just a tiny piece of scotch tape just to reinforce that. And here I'm going to tuck in another fern and I'm just really playing with the pieces and seeing what works for me. Obviously these are your um, components and you can decide how you want to put them together and what's going to work for you and if you're going to send this to a son or your husband then you might want to use more greenery than flowers. My husband happens to like flowers so it's it's all good in this household. And there's nothing really officially that these blue flowers are growing off of. 
I'm just using them as a contrast in this arrangement and I did decide to put the B on the spout and here I'm going to grab my reverse tweezers just to give me an extra hand in this process so that that will hold it together while I work on um, assembling the card and some of the other floral vignettes here. And it's funny, I push that ribbon up out of the way and then sure enough, no, nope, this is what we need to just kind of anchor this image on there. And I'm really liking how this these cards are coming together. I hope it's something that you enjoy doing. And if you do something radically different with it, yay, be sure to share it with us on the Crafting with Amanda VIP page. I love seeing those things. I did want to show and make sure to note that when you do dry embossing on papers, you want to make sure to use a very strong adhesive because it only adheres where paper touches paper. And since we're making valleys or openings on the back side, you want to make sure to have something strong because it only touches on those points. So I'm just trying to make sure that my ribbon stays a little flatter. I go ahead and use the score tape on ribbon because I don't like to have ribbon pop off my projects. So I do not skimp when it comes to adhesives. And here you can see that I did two rows, probably overkill, but again, I'm just trying to get my adhesive straight. I think this ribbon actually came on a gift from somebody and I just love the color so much that I had to save it. So I wound it up and put it in with my ribbons and now it's getting used on this project and I absolutely love it. So I'm gonna go ahead and burnish down the ribbon onto that score tape. I will cut the edges of the ribbon off, but because the adhesive goes right to the end, I don't have to worry about the ribbon fraying or any of that. It just, it stops at the end and, and it stays really nice. I'm gonna round out this terracotta pot a little bit and put a piece of foam tape in that divot so that it just kind of gives it a more 3D uh, look on the front of this card. And that's optional if you want to do that or not. I just, I really like how it turned out. So yes, the bottom is open, but you know what? Again, I don't think that somebody receiving this card in the mail is going to be looking at it so closely and judging it so much that they are going to say one ill thing about it. They're just going to think great thoughts that you sent them this beautiful card. None of these cards use shimmer brush. There's not any gems that I used. I kind of wanted to keep it simple, um, making sure that for the most part I knew that all of my ladies would have these tools to use to be able to create this card and not, you know, oh, I didn't buy the Backyard Bliss papers or the mix in so I don't have those papers to go behind these flowers. So that's why I went ahead and, and did something with the embossing folders. And when you do something different, go ahead and show us on the Crafting with Amanda VIP group. I would love to see what you did. Originally, I thought this longer flower would be stunning along the edge of a card, but as I was doing the layering of these embossed white daisy pieces, I just thought this was the perfect size to get two cards out of the one image, and that's exactly what I plan to do. So when you emboss, sometimes your paper can get stretched or smushed or um, reduced in one direction and not the other. And so even though this was cut correctly after it went through the embossing process, I felt that I just needed to trim the one side so that it was an even border around the rest of the card. So don't, don't beat yourself up if things like that happen. Just make it look right to you and move on. And this is the Carolina Blue and I did all three papers with that Carolina blue edge and I stamped the sentiment and that sentiment came from the floral sentiments um, that's in the current catalog. And I just, you know, I'm trimming off the bottom of that little yellow flower 
I don't know if they're buttercups um, or something else. They kind of look like a trumpet vine maybe, but the trumpet's a little short. So here I'm going to show you that again I'm going to use tape to secure the rose in the terracotta pot. But you can see the three cards on here. I am going to distribute the bees, but so the watering can could replace the terracotta pot in the bottom left. The rose could also replace the terracotta pot. So there's two more cards you could create. And then we have our trumpet vine with the yellow that you can make another sympathy card or a thinking of you card with that, or that can also replace the daisy and use the desert rose six petal flower as well. So I think you could easily get six cards out of the pieces from the Backyard Bliss SVGs. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, now's a good time to do that. You'll know if you've subscribed if the word is grayed out. If it's in red, it means you're not subscribing to my channel and you may miss some of my contents. I try to publish on Tuesday, Fridays, and Sundays. Fridays and Sundays are normally scrapbook related. Here's another video you may be interested in. Blessings!